Hi, welcome to Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. And I'm Dr. Brad Weening. And uh, this episode is concerned with um, infected total joint replacements. Something that I hate. Yeah, it is, you know, surgeons uh, are unhappy when we see this, and this, of course, is the biggest burden on you, the patient, if you have an infected uh, total joint. It is uh, a big deal and can be devastating. However, the good news is there's treatment for it. It is curable, and we're going to run through some of that stuff now, so hopefully you'll feel a bit better after you watch this video. Okay, so Paul, how do you know if you have an infected joint replacement? Okay, so you've got a total knee replacement, total hip replacement, or even a total shoulder replacement, and um, you're worried it's infected. The signs or the symptoms of an infection would be increasing pain, swelling, redness, uh, discharge, drainage, and you might have some fevers and chills. Okay, so a broad uh, array of signs and symptoms, and it could be either right after surgery, it right. could be further out from surgery, six months, a year, ten years. Um, infections can come at kind of any time. So we divide these infections into two groups, the acute kind, the kind that happened right after surgery within the first few weeks, or uh, the kind that happened right uh, after some sort of surgical procedure elsewhere in your body, and then your joint gets infected, and we find it acutely or chronic infections where this has been going on for a year or two and the infection is now chronic. So if you do have any of those concerns or signs or symptoms and you go to your doctor, typically it would start with a history and physical examination like any other medical problem. Um, often your doctor will do blood work. Potentially your surgeon would uh, consider an aspiration where a needle is put into the joint to remove some fluid either there in the office or in a clinic, potentially using ultrasound or x-ray guidance. Then that fluid is sent to a lab to test it for bacteria and the number of white cells and other things that are in it. And then the last one would be some other type of imaging, so either an x-ray or possibly a bone scan. Right. Uh, those are all the tools we have available. However, sometimes it is difficult to make the diagnosis of an infected joint replacement. Sometimes all these things can come back negative, uh, yet the joint is still infected. That's what makes it so tricky. Yeah, so if, if the tests are positive, then there's a very high chance that you have an infection. If the tests are all negative, it doesn't necessarily mean that you don't have an infection. It kind of doesn't seem fair. Right. So infections are rare, so uh, you don't, don't get stressed out if you have a joint replacement and you don't have an infection. They're very rare, but they can be tricky to diagnose. So let's say we've been through all the tests and you have the diagnosis, you have an infected total joint replacement. What do we do? So I would say there are probably three main treatments for uh, infection. So the first one would be antibiotics. The second and third choices would be surgery, and one of them would just be to wash your joint out, and the other one would be a revision, hip or a revision replacement. So let's start with antibiotics, Paul. Okay. So this sort of scenario is you just had a hip or knee replaced, and uh, you know things are going fine, but you notice around within the first week you're getting some increasing redness, some drainage. Uh, from the wound, uh, increasing pain. This is, uh, this could be an infection and your surgeon has to determine whether it's superficial or it's deep. If it's a superficial infection just in the soft tissues, it can be treated effectively usually with antibiotics. If the infection is deeper and goes into the joint itself, this is now more like at the one, greater than one week mark, one to two weeks, three weeks mark, then you may need uh, surgical intervention in the form of irrigation and debridement where uh, you go to the operating room, the surgeon opens the incision again and washes out the joint. But keeps all the parts. Keeps all the parts. Okay, and so if it's a deeper infection, why, why can't we just use antibiotics? That's a good question. Because everybody says to me, oh, well, if, then why can't I just have antibiotics? What, what happens with uh, implants, so metal implants, plastic implants, when bacteria adhere to those implants, it's very difficult for the body's immune system and for antibiotics uh, to get at the bacteria to cure it. I use the example, it's like having a splinter. If you have a splinter uh, and it's red and swollen, you can uh, give antibiotics, you can go do acupuncture, you can go to the naturopath, you can go to the physiotherapist, you can go do anything you want, but as long as that splinter is there, that infection will persist. Uh, the only way to cure it is to remove the splinter. Or in the case of an implant, and it's acute, go in and wash out the implant. Does that make sense? That does make sense. Uh, thankfully the implants aren't made of wood. 
Well, not the modern implants, no. Good. So if antibiotics don't work, and if washing it out doesn't work, um, the next surgery is to take all the parts out. Right. Or and if this is a chronic infection. Right. If it's been in for a long time, if you've had the infection for more than four to six weeks, right. a washout is unlikely to work. And as Dr. Weening was saying, removal is necessary. And so when you take all the parts out, this is often very difficult. And that's why surgeons often will not rush into this because if your body has grown bone onto the implants, you actually have to use sometimes a hammer and a chisel or a saw to physically remove them. They don't just, you don't just open it up and take them out. So it's a big deal. Um, after they are removed, then there are typically two other solutions. One is to put a, a temporary a joint replacement made out of antibiotic cement or a uh, complete revision total joint replacement. Um, can you give an idea of why we would do one or both of those, yeah. Paul? So those are called one-stage revision, where you go in and put a new joint right away, or two-stage revision, where you go in, take out the infected one, put in a temporary one, take some IV antibiotics for six weeks, and then go back in around the six-week to three-month mark and put in the definitive prosthesis. That's a two-stage revision. Generally, uh, the chance of curing the infection is a little bit higher with a two-stage revision than a one-stage revision. Right. Uh, so for some reason, for me, around the knee, I prefer to use two-stage revisions. Um, and then around the hip, I usually uh, plan to do a two-stage revision. But after I do the first stage, very often uh, the infection is cured and people are feeling pain-free, so they elect not to do the second stage and the infection appears to be cured most and I, of the time. And I think what's fair to say is that these are very case-specific and surgeon-specific decisions that you'll discuss at length before you undergo these procedures, so um, all infections are treated very, very differently. So discuss it with your surgeon and probably go from there. Yeah. But I, I think Paul's point is, is important to take that um, infections are a curable problem. Not in all cases, but in the majority of cases, a solution can be found. But often it's a, it's a long, arduous process. Right. So again, the best thing is prevention. So you can watch one of our other videos on uh, hip or knee replacement. And uh, the key is uh, prevention of infection. Uh, definitely, however, if an infection does occur, there is treatment for you. Excellent. And yes, we're also going to have other videos about um, the surgeries themselves, what's involved with an infected knee replacement and infected hip replacement, because they are quite different. Right. So if you have any questions, please email them to talkingwithdocs at gmail.com. And remember, uh, you are in charge of your own health. See you next time.